cold open. Interior, Shady Glen. Phoebe's room, night. Shady Glen assisted living resident, Phoebe Wallendorf, well-kept and over 80, stands in front of an ornate mirror. A floral headband holds her holds back her wispy, honey-colored hair. Phoebe applies a balm to her face and elbows. Then she makes an odd expression reaching for her chest. Phoebe moans and crumples to the floor. One hand shakily makes its way to the senior alert monitor around her neck. Nurse's station. A red light flashes at the nurse's station. No one sees it. The red light continues to blink. To blink. Interior. Hallway outside Phoebe's room the next morning. Mitzi Breeze, another Shady Glen resident, mid-70s, knocks on Phoebe's door. Mitzi, ever full of righteous purpose, wears a headscarf and matching glamorous caftan. Despite her morning garb, Mitzi wears full makeup. Good morning, Phoebe. It's Mitzi. Are you ready for our walk? She knocks again. Oh, don't worry if your face isn't on. I'm not judgmental. One time I walked in on Steven before a drag queen performance and he was pulling up his tucking panties. Well, he was mortified, but I told him I'd seen him in diapers for years. I didn't mention that I always made his nanny change him. Mitzi reaches for the lever. The door opens. Interior, Phoebe's room, morning, continuous. Mitzi enters and surveys the room. She sees Phoebe on the floor. Mitzi gasps in horror. Mitzi takes a step closer to Phoebe, recognizing that she's dead. Mitzi's hand raises to her trembling lips, and then she looks away. POV, Mitzi's gaze moves to the counter in front of the mirror. And you finally received your expensive sunset of life, rejuvenating cream. Oh, what a tragedy. Why do such awful things happen to me? Handshaking, Mitzi slips the sunset of life into a pocket of her calf, caftan. Opening credits roll. Insert, opening credits, TV screen. An old school box TV mounted near the ceiling plays a video on endless loop. And the opening show credits run over this. A cheerful middle-aged man and middle-aged woman bring a beaming elderly woman into a facility that looks palatial. The volume is low. We looked everywhere before we found the right place for mother. We love having a staff take care of her 24 seven. Cut to a shot of a well-appointed bedroom area. The elderly woman sits on the edge of a bed. It seems lovely, except that the bed has restraints. Pan to the couple off to the side. Finally, we have time to enjoy one another again. Middle-aged man hugs middle-aged woman. Elderly woman looks on from the bed, a strained smile pasted on her face. Montage. Residents in wheelchairs performing arm exercises. Residents watch the best exotic marigold hotel in the lounge. Residents eat soft serve ice cream in a fancy dining room. Welcome to your golden years. Welcome to Shady Glen. Interior, Shady Glen waiting room, late morning. Retired school teacher, Mary Fogarty, about 70, and fit for her age, sits on a white pleather couch. She tries to ignore the saccharine but terrifying video. Mary has the calm countenance of a woman who knows how to handle any situation. She wears an expensive t-shirt with a picture of B. Arthur that reads, Go to sleep, sweetheart. Pray for brains. Mary's crutches lean against the couch. One leg is soft-casted to the hip, jutting onto a small ottoman. Mary, POV. Mitzi walks by and sees Mary. Mitzi is now dressed Texas style. Voluminous champagne hair and a peach jacket. Mitzi steps into the waiting room. Are you a new resident? Yes, but I'm only here temporarily to recover from my leg injury. We're all here temporarily until we die. My name is Mary. I'm Mitzi. I check your hand, but my son just painted my nails. Mitzi holds out her hot pink tipped fingers. One hand has a slight tremor. Flamenco freesia. Stephen likes color. My room was supposed to be ready this morning, but I've been sitting here for almost two hours. Schmaltz Health just bought Shady Glen from the O'Keefe family. 
I didn't waste any time renting dear Phoebe's room. It seems they're better at renting the rooms than preparing them. Schmall's health fired almost all our favorite orderlies and, and, and employees and uh, orderlies and the nursing staff and... Do you know anything about this? No. I hope the service doesn't suffer. I, I chose Shady Glen because of their good reputation. Well, everything goes downhill. And it appears to be accelerating. Interior Shady Glen manager's office early afternoon. Mary sits across from Glenn Gottfried, late 40s and director of Shady Glen. He's done everything he can to hide the fact that he's balding. I'd like to welcome you to Shady Glen. Thank you. Do you have any family to help you during your stay? We find that can be enormously helpful. Isn't that what I'm paying you to do? Still, it would be good if you had family that we, or you, could reach out to in your time of need. Now that you mention help, I do have some concerns about what I've seen since I've been here. I'll speak to that. I'm not just the director, but I intercourse with many of the residents, even when they don't have loved ones. I appreciate that. Um, I, I'd like to know more about the change in ownership at Shady Glen. Have you seen the new Schmaltz Health Health video? On Infinite Loop, while I was waiting for you for two hours. That's good. Then you really understand Shady Glen. Yes, it was very illuminating. Well, uh, your room is ready and dinner is at five. Yeah. An uncomfortable beat. Glenn forces a smile waiting for Mary to leave. I'm not qualified to touch people, but I can call someone who is. Mary reaches for her crutches. <laughs> Interior, Shady Glen dining room, late afternoon, dinner. Residents sit at square tables. Staff lay out dinner, buffet style. Orderlies provide individual meals to residents on special diets. Mary enters the dining room and crutches to the closest table. She puts some effort into arranging her chair and her crutches before she sits. Then Mitzi appears. Newcomers sit at that table until they are put into the correct seating arrangement. Mitzi points Mary to the table closest to the kitchen. Is that official policy or your rule? It's merely good manners. I presume those with handicaps would be given some latitude. Ah, you and your presumptions. Interior, table by the kitchen door, following. Mary crutches to the table for three. Two chairs are empty. Oliver Hernandez, a retired detective in a wheelchair who also wears a Chicago Bears jersey. Did you fall? No. You're not um, suffering from arthritis, too spry. I'm gonna say division two basketball. Division three, Lake Forest. How did you know? Uh, you're tall, but not too tall. Still in good shape, which hints a uh, former athlete. And if you don't have arthritis, the culprit for that attractive cast must be a repetitive sports injury. Impressive. <sighs> Retired Chicago PD, Oliver Hernandez. Nice to meet you. Shake your hand, but between the two of us, we have the mobility of those Easter Island statues. Isn't the exclusion a little odd? Apparently I'm not allowed to sit where I want. Ah, uh, yes, the quartet, the old women who run the social scene here at Shady Glen. But there are only three. Because Phoebe, the nicest and richest of the four, dropped dead two nights ago. The mean one mentioned that to me, as though I caused her death. <laughs> <sighs> That's Mitzi. I dated her for a brief time, but since we broke up, this baby's been put in this corner. What's her issue with me? You took Phoebe's room. Mitzi will hold that against you, no matter how irrational. That explains a lot. They're auditioning Bernice for the fourth spot. 
Mary POV. Bernice, a spry elderly black woman, approaches the table with uh, for four with the three surviving members of the quartet. I'm a little surprised by their choice. They're judgmental as hell, but not overtly racist. And Bernice is rich. They like that about her. Interior. Shady Glen dining room. Quartet table. Cece. A petite Asian ama with glasses on a chain gloomily sips her tea. Cece could be anywhere from 70s to 90s. Oh, it's just not the same. Angelica Gottfried, a stocky German Altafrau with an asymmetrical haircut and in her mid-70s can't follow the conversation. I agree. The spetzel is inedible. I don't know how I'll afford to stay here without the money I won from... Phoebe. Oh, Phoebe. But she'd agree with me. You'll need gluten to make the egg noodles bind to the Geschnetzeltes. What are you talking about? Doggy dumplings don't pick up the sauce. That's what my Thurman used to say. Hmm. God rest his soul. Bernice shifts in her seat, claiming her place. Interior, Shady Glen dining room, reject table. Mary and Oliver have finished their meals and they're waiting for dessert. People allow these women to behave this way. Assisted living facilities are like high schools. The only difference is that geriatrics don't have the excuse of being young and stupid. Well, at least the former. Mitzi chooses her friends based on what they can do for her. Angelica's son is Glenn. He's the director and he broke the sale to Schmaltz Health. Oh, I met that one. He puts the shady in this place. Why isn't Angelica in charge of the quartet? Angelica is in the early stages of Alzheimer's, and she's always been a bit scattered, and Mitzi has taken advantage. What does Director Glenn think of that? Oh, he's thrilled to be in charge of the family money, and he'll do anything that small self requires. What about the Asian woman? Don't ever play Mahjong for money with Cece. She pays to live here with her winnings. It's like being in the classroom again. Only this time I have no control over the middle schoolers. Mary stands on one foot, reaching for her crutches. Where are you going? I need some chocolate relief. That's going to be a problem. Don't tell me they oversee the ice cream. Only the chocolate. You can have as much vanilla as you want. Interior, Shady Glen dining room, quartet table. The four women lean in. Someone requested that an autopsy be performed on Phoebe. Who would do that? I don't know. Phoebe has no immediate family left. Oh, that's why I grew so close to her. Do you think they suspect something unusual happened? Maybe. Maybe it has to do with the new owners of Shady Glen. Well, it's possible. But I wouldn't put it past that one. I don't think Oliver is capable of murder. Not Oliver. You nitwit. <laughs> of course you're right. If Oliver committed the crime, then it would be too easy for him to solve. The new one is Mary. Mm. There wasn't anyone in the waiting room with her when, so she obviously doesn't have any family that cares. And the waiting line for this place is the law. Or maybe she's a plant. Oh, I always thought Fern was a plant. Oh, but then she died of cancer. Um, dear? I think you should ask your son how Mary was able to get into Shady Glen so quickly. Oh, I don't think she got in quickly at all. I mean, look at those crutches and that cast. Oh. oh, just ask him why Mary was allowed into Shady Glen. Ah, I did, I did. Oh. Just remind me. Have I ever mentioned that I once starred on the opera stage in Vienna? Many, many times. Oh, my voice was so beautiful when I was young. 
<sighs> and so does I. <laughs> Angelica strokes her blunt cut. Interior, coroner's lab, the next morning. Corner number one strips off her plastic gloves and throws them in the hazardous waste bin. Through the window to the exam room, we can see Phoebe's dead body lying on a gurney. The sheet has slipped off her face. Corner number two hands corner number one coffee and a paper cup. Remind me why we're doing this again. Detective Hernandez referred this case to us. Isn't he retired? Yeah, but he still has the ear of the people in the police department. Anything interesting? No, which is unusual. Despite her heart condition, the drugs that she was taking should have managed that, if properly administered. Well, she was 83. Sometimes these things just happen, and it's hard to determine what the cause of death was. Sure. But maybe Detective Hernandez was onto something. Sure. Let's see uh, what the lab results reveal. Insert. The camera zooms in on Phoebe's corpse. Exterior. Shady Glen. Late morning. Glenn parks his new BMW in the director's parking space, and he steps out of the vehicle. Glenn POV. The building facade looks like a mansion with tall colonnades supporting the roof over a large one-story structure. Back to the scene. Glenn admires his fiefdom as he approaches. Insert. Glenn's hand punches in four-digit code. Each digit sings a tone. The door buzzes, and Glenn opens it. Interior. Shady Glenn, staff room, an hour later. Glenn presides over a staff meeting. He shifts uncomfortably at the lectern, wearing a corporate golf shirt that reads, Schmaltz Health. From now on, every dose of medication that comes into this facility must be inspected by me before it's logged into the system. Carl Watkins, a mid-20s stocky black guy, and one of the remaining staff members from before the Schmaltz Health takeover. Uh, why so, boss? Schmaltz Health believes there are accounting irregularities, and they want me to provide accurate records of every dose of medication. Oh, I sure do miss the O'Keefe's. They made this a really nice place to die. Those days are over. Now it's an organized corporate place to die. And organization is better than nice. So... You want to give the pills to the patients yourself? Absolutely not. I pay all of you to force feed old people their dementia meds. <laughs> um, I want all new prescriptions to go through me before you give any pills to patients. Also, I want daily reports on particular inmates. Residents? Residents. I'll brief each of you individually on who and what you'll be looking for. You're dismissed. The staff files out of the break room. Devlin is a new Schmaltz employee, Schmaltz health employee, early 20s with Wiccan tattoos. She's not well suited to senior care, but she's strong as a moose. I heard he was an asshole before Schmaltz health promoted him. Yes, he's prolapsing. Pro what? Um, it's, it's what my dude would say. I got what you wanted. Devlin reaches into her bag that contains a bundle of sage, an amethyst, and a Santeria candle. She pulls out potato chips, a porn mag, and cologne. Don't be showing that here. But meet me out back by the dumpsters in 20. Devlin exit, and Carl rubs his hands together. So Washington gonna have himself a night to remember. Interior, Shady Glen. Room of solitude. Day. This room has dark paneling, a tiny chandelier, and fake plants. It's as tasteful as can be, given the description. A large photo of Phoebe sits on a wooden <laughs> easel next to the shiny black casket with parallel golden stripes around it. Mitzi and the other women in the quartet sit prominently in the front row of chairs placed before the pulpit. Next to Mitzi is a highly made-up man wearing a pinstripe suit with a pink tie, her drag queen son, Stephen. I can't believe you made me come to this. No, some respect. She was my best friend. You only liked her because she paid for part of your resident fees and your spa treatments. And for many of your proclivities. <clears throat> so, did she leave us the money? We won't know about that until the reading of the will. In the meantime, act like you care. 
All you had to do was avoid fighting with father and we wouldn't <gasps> be in this financial mess. Oh, I never minded him the cheating. It was when he started taking that slut to business dinners. I thought the breaking point was when he disowned me for being me. Oh, yes, that too. Well, the hair is a fright, but the casket is fabulous. Interior, room of solitude, back door. Mary crutches into the back of the room, moving toward the empty chair nearest the door. Oliver wheels in behind her. Mitzi turns and sees them. Oh, no, 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 no. Mitzi approaches Mary. Only friends and family members are allowed. Who you to say who can attend? The person who determines whether or not your life here will be hell. I don't want to fight with you, but I'm <sighs> not interested in tiptoeing around you for the next six weeks. She's right, Mitzi. Your control issues are showing up. Well, I know how things should be. Mother knows best, hmm? Exactly. Now scram, or I'll call an orderly. What makes you think that will do anything? <laughs> I don't make my delicious bourbon pecan pie for the yearly Christmas party for nothing. Holiday party. Oh, two parties. Mary reaches for her crutches. You'll regret this. Ah, uh, it's okay, Oliver. I'll leave. Mitzi is right. I didn't know Phoebe. Neither did Mitzi. Beyond her money. <sighs> Interior. Room of solitude. Front of room. Following. Angelica walks to the podium. I will now sing a dirge in honor of my dear friend. <laughs> Whose name escapes me? Like a Exterior, Shady Glen entrance, half hour later. Carl and the other care staff and interns clumsily carry Phoebe's casket outside toward a well-appointed hearse. Devlin gets a phone call and she reaches into her pocket. She loses her grip on the casket, which sets the large box in motion. The others lose their grip, and the casket hits the ground at an odd angle. The lid springs open, and Phoebe's ghastly post-autopsy body stumbles onto the asphalt. Oh, shit! Interior, Shady Glen hallway after Phoebe's memorial. Mary crutches down the hallway. She sees Oliver wheeled next to Glenn's office. Before Mary can say hi, Oliver raises a finger to his lips. He's listening at the wall. Mary moves along, allowing Oliver to gather ev evidence. Glenn speaks to his boss, Alexis Anawalt. Phoebe Wallendorf's report came from the coroner's office. It didn't show anything out of the ordinary, but they're still waiting for the drug panel. Drug panel? God damn it, Glenn. Information is getting out somehow. And the more I talk to you, the more I think that you are the weak link. I assure you, ma'am, that I am the strongest link. I keep all the information inside this office and it doesn't leave. One more mistake like this and you're out. Exterior, Shady Glen parking lot following. Devlin bends near Phoebe's decaying doll parts body. Carl, grab her legs. We got to get her back in the casket. Ain't no we when a dead body falls out of a casket. Just help us. Look, I shower these old people when they shit themselves. I wash their shit stained sheets. I feed them fiber when they can't shit. I am surrounded by shit all day, every day. I won't touch the dead body of a rich white lady that you dropped on the ground after doctors cut out her innards and stuffed them back in. You figure it out. You get her back in the box. Then I'll help you carry that box to that vehicle right over there. Fuck you and your phone call that you gotta answer the minute it rings. Carl's phone rings. Hello, babe? Yeah. No, oh, yeah, I got a minute. Interior. Shady Glen, director's office. A little while later. Oliver is gone, and Angelica enters her son's office. Oh. Hello, Libchen. I thought we could talk. I I'm busy, mother. I thought you were at Phoebe's memorial. Oh, it's over now. And there was no Zuckerkuchen. Mother. How many times have I told you that the cooks at Shady Glen don't know 
how to make German food. Juan used to make it, then I asked him. Juan's name was Manuel, and he told you nachos were schnitzel. Anyway, Juan is gone, and I need you to go, too. Glenn tries to usher her oh, out the door. Wait, 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 wait. There's something I'm supposed to ask you. Um, Mary, why is she here? I don't know who Mary is. If you forget, she's the one that had Phoebe killed and took her room. I want to know how Mary got into Shady Glen and if she has any skeletons in her closet. Also, ask Glenn for a discount on the upgraded meal deal for me as mine expires next month. Oh, did I find out everything I needed to, dear? Yes, mother. <sighs> Glenn closes the door. He leans against it. This is becoming a problem. Interior, Shady Glen, outside the director's office following. Angelica looks at Carl as he walks by. Have I ever told you about the time I sang Johnny Skiki? Carl slows, still a bit shell-shocked from the parking lot incident. Yeah, I never get tired of that groove, Miss Angelica. Mm. He's <sighs> timeless. Yes. Yes, it is. Exterior. Mm. Shady Glen lawn next morning. Mary and Oliver sit in the shade under a tree in a quiet corner of Shady Glen's expansive back lawn. About a hundred yards away, the mean girls, including Bernice, play croquet. It's like an old lady version of Heather's. Without Winona Ryder to redeem them. Should, maybe we should buy Mitzi a pack of corn nuts. I wasn't a teacher for 25 years to be hounded by a clique of bullies. I didn't allow it in the classroom and I won't stand for it here. How very. We need to talk, but not here. There are too many people. About what? I'd like you to help me. Break up the quartet? No. This is about something far more nefarious. What's worse than geriatric mean girls? Okay, let's go. Interior, Oliver's room following. Oliver's room is sparsely decorated, but there's a photo of him in a police officer's uniform. Mary lifts it. How long were you a detective? Almost 30 years, and I want to recruit you. To do what? I'll be gone in a few weeks. Help me gather information about Schmaltz's health. How would I do that? Why would I do that? The why is because Schmaltz's health is up to something. I suspect they're selling pills in the black market and maybe worse. The how is about infiltrating the quartet and getting information, particularly from Angelica, whose son is Shady Glenn's director. I, I do think senior care is an important issue, but frankly, I find the idea of cozying up to the quartet repugnant. I think that the residents are suffering from crimes that Schmaltz's health is committing. Phoebe? That's my belief. But Mitzi hates me, and the sentiment is mutual, I assure you. She doesn't hate you. She's just testing you. If you had something she needed... Like what? Mitzi is scrambling for money because she squandered her alimony payments. She's on bad terms with her ex. He won't give her any money beyond a small monthly stipend. How does she maintain her looks then? That Texas bouffant isn't cheap. By recruiting people into a group who can pay her bills. Phoebe was a major loss for her. She used to pay for Mitzi's extras like Botox and shopping sprees, hence Bernice. Plus, Mitzi's group has information the rest of us don't because Angelica's son, Glenn, manages the facility and he does whatever Schmaltz Health says. Why can't you do it? Mitzi and I have a past. I couldn't start dating her again in any plausible way. She barely speaks to me. No, I don't want to. So? Okay. But only for the six weeks that I'm here. Then you'll need to get another stooge. Deal. Interior. Angelica's room. Day. 
Angelica watches the sound of music. Mitzi enters. Did you learn anything? Oh, um, I don't think so. You have to go back and ask him. It is very important. Of course. Who is it I'm asking? Oh. Interior, Glenn's office, day. Angelica snoops through her son's desk, pulling papers from a file labeled Phoebe Wallendorf. Angelica takes a phone picture of the paper with Phoebe's medications. Next to each medication, a dollar amount is listed. Insert on piece of paper. Bisacodil, $100 per dose. Ambien, $200 per dose. Synthroid, $50 per dose. Back to scene. Glenn enters, sees Angelica holding the file and papers. Mother, you absolutely cannot stoop, snoop through my office. I told you before, that if you did it again, there would be consequences. I was looking for you again, but you weren't here. Now I am. And you don't look well at all. Oh, my voice has never been better. Oh, me a baby. It's time for a visit to the doctor. Me piace. Glenn takes the file from Angelica's hands leading her out of his office. Angelica puts her phone in her pocket. Interior, rec room, day. Mary sits, her broken leg propped on an ottoman, phone in hand. Oliver perches on his wheelchair farther into the room, a tasteful distance away. His eyes are on the door. Not yet. No. Oliver affects reading a magazine as Mitzi and Bernice enter. Now, he loved that car, which is why I buried my dear Thurman in his 55 Packard. Mitzi barely listens to Bernice, taking in the scene in the room. Uh-huh. So move a million into cash before the stock crashes. I know cash doesn't make any money, but it doesn't lose value other than through inflation. Just do what I say. On Mitzi, suddenly interested in Mary in a way she hasn't been before. Back to the scene. Mary ends her call and reaches for her crutches. Good to see you, Mitzi. Bernice. Mary crutches past them, leaving the room. W what was that about? I thought you knew. Mary is loaded. Too bad you're doing everything you can to alienate her. I, I don't know why that would matter to me. No idea. You haven't had your hair styled since Phoebe died, have you? <sighs> Interior, Alzheimer's ward, late afternoon. Angelica lies restrained on the bed. A baby doll has been placed beside her. Mm. You want something to eat? I want to talk to my son. Who is your son? Glenn Gottfried. Oh. He's the manager of this facility, sweetie, not your son. He's my son. I remember. The sound of music plays on her TV. Interior, dining room, dinner, evening. Mitzi, Cece, and Bernice sit awaiting their meals. Mary crutches into the room, holding to the small table near the kitchen. Um, we, we, we have an opening. You do? You can sit here now if you'd like to. I mean, for now. Such a warm welcome. We start slowly until we develop trust. I'll take you off on your offer. <sighs> for now. Carl takes Mary's crutches and sets them aside. Mary settles into the empty seat. What happened to Angelica? <sighs> She's been sent to the ward. By her son. Glenn, the manager of the facility? Precisely. Oh, there's something fishy going on here. And maybe you can help us figure out what that is. It seems like it. Well, the table has leaves. It can be expanded to five if we can get Angelica out of the ward. The night creams of the round table. After dinner, we can play mahjong. 
I don't know the rules. Oh, you seem like a fast learner. Interior, Alzheimer's ward, late afternoon. Angelica watches TV. Interior, dining room, dinner, evening. Carl approaches the table. What would you ladies like for dinner this evening? We have pasta bolognese or sea bass with spring vegetables. I would like chocolate ice cream. For dinner? Yes. And keep it coming. Insert TV screen. The ubiquitous Shady Glen commercial plays. Handsome middle-aged narrator moves close to elderly woman. Our memory ward is a caring place you'll never forget. Broaden to the quartet. Mary continues to eat ice cream. We hold on, Mary. Chocolate ice cream isn't 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 good for for for, for your waistline, dearie. Now, Thurman used to eat ice cream for dinner. He obviously isn't that good. Isn't that what killed him? He died of natural causes. Good the best way to go next time on shady glen episode two phoebe's will as mary and oliver continue their investigation into schmaltz health mitzi and steven learn that phoebe has not included them in her will though who benefited from the estate is unclear angelica enlists devlin and carl who successfully release her from the alzheimer's ward by pressuring director glenn who retaliates by removing the facility's soft serve ice cream dispenser, infuriating both Mary and the quartet. Episode 5, The Staff of Life, midpoint of season 1. After Mr. Washington dies during a vigorous bout of onanism, <laughs> Carl feels guilty for providing him with porn and ultra-smooth moisturizer. Carl and Bernice organize a potluck for his memorial and are shocked when family members show up. Cece is offended when no one eats her Chinese tea eggs. Mr. Washington's death so soon after Phoebe's opens the door to an investigation into Schmaltz health, especially when Angelica uses her sleuthing ability to undermine her son. Episode 10, Slippery so Slope, the end of season one. Quartet and Mary obtain proof that Schmaltz health has been taking the residents' pills and selling them on the black market. Feeling all loose ends, including her health, are tied up, Mary walks out of Shady Glen to the icy parking lot, slips, and re-breaks her leg. Inside, Carl and Devlin explain how Schmaltz Health has been misappropriating residents' funds and that Glen is cooperating with the feds. Mary realizes her stay at Shady Glen has just begun.